theory in a nutshell, triads. Identifying major and minor triads. Augmented and diminished triads will be dealt with later. Okay, so a triad, or triads, are three notes played together and arranged vertically in thirds. Boom, boom, boom. I call it snow person position when it's in root position like this. Boom, boom, boom. Line, line, line. You can have space, space, space. This triad is in root position, meaning the root note is on the bottom, and this one is a major triad. I'll tell you why in a second. We call the bottom note root when it's in the snow person position. We call the middle note the third and the top note the fifth. So root, third, fifth. Really important. Uh, okay, a major triad. Major triads have a major third right here and a perfect fifth right there. So both these top notes work in the key, fit into the key of G major. G major is one sharp. You won't always have a key signature when you're trying to figure out your triads, but here we do. G major is a B natural, D natural. It's a major triad. Major third, perfect fifth. Okay, so the upper two notes are both in the key of the bottom note. A minor triad. So this time I put a B flat there, flat right in front of the B. So we still have the G, B, D, but this is a B flat now. So minor triads now have a minor third, but we still have the perfect fifth up here. Okay, so the third of the triad, the middle one in root position, is a minor third above the root. The fifth is still a perfect fifth. So the difference between a major triad and a minor triad is this middle note right here when it's in root position, the third of the triad. Remember root, third, fifth. The third is a half step lower, making it a minor third from the bottom note. Okay, now, <clears throat> in major keys, the tonic subdominant and dominant triads are all major triads. Really, really important to note this, okay? So, here we are in G major, G major here. This is our tonic triad, G, B, D. G, B, D, that's a major triad. Any time you write a triad on the tonic note of any major key, it will be a major triad. Any time you create a, a subdominant triad in a major key, it will be a major triad. Same with the dominant. Okay, now this is really important for work in uh, cadences and and things in different keys when you're trying to figure out maybe root quality chords or functional chord symbols. You have to know that in majors, tonic triads are always major, subdominants are always major, dominants are always major. Now here, here's a minor triad for us. In minor keys, now this is E minor of course, because that's a relative to, uh, to G major. Hopefully you know that by now, G major, E minor. Um, the tonic triad is now a minor triad. That's why I have the lowercase Roman numeral down here. When you build a triad in any, any minor key on the subdominant note, it will be a minor triad as well. So that's different than the major. It kind of switches for those ones. And then when you build a dominant triad in a minor key, and we almost always use, um, well, for this kind of thing, we will always use harmonic minor, you will be raising that middle note, the third note, of the triad, the third, root third, fifth, you'll be raising that third by a half step because it's the leading tone. And that will make the dominant triad major. Very important. This happens all the time. And in the exams you might do, the RCM exams or other exams, you will have questions like that. And a lot of you will forget to raise your leading tone. Please remember, in a minor key, the dominant triad is major because we always raise the leading tone. Now, a bit further with these, <clears throat> to identify a major or minor triad, just like intervals, think in the key of the root. Is a third of the triad uh, above the root, is it a major or minor third? And if the triad's not in root position, put it in root position if you need that visual. This we'll kind of talk about in a, in a minute. We're going to talk about inversions in a sec. So let's look at this. Here's D, F, and A, root, third, fifth. So I'm thinking in D major. Is F a major third above D or is it a minor third? Well, D major has an F sharp, right? That's an F natural, it's one half step lower. It's a minor third, that's a minor third. So this is a minor triad right there, D, F, A. If it were major, there'd be an F sharp. This one, F, A, C, you see there's no key signatures anywhere. So we're just dealing with these triads as they come, not worrying about a key signature. F, A, C. 
Well, F major, you ask yourself, is the A natural in F major? It is. So this is a major triad, because F, A, C, all those notes are part of F major. We're thinking in the key of the bottom note of the triad. If it were minor, you'd have to have an A flat there. This one, E, G sharp, B. I hope you're thinking that's got to be major because E has a G sharp in it. If it were minor, it would be a G natural. And last but not least, this one over here, A flat, C flat, E flat. Well, how many flats does A flat major have? I hope you all said four flats in your head, or maybe even out loud. So there is no C flat in A flat major. This makes that a minor third. Remember, these ones over here, the majors were major thirds. This is a minor third. So this is a minor triad. Okay, we're just dealing with major and minors right now. Now, another thing about triads is they come in inversions. So here's a D major triad, D, F sharp, A. It's major because D and F sharp is a major third, and there's your perfect fifth. We can invert them where the bottom note, the root, goes on the top. So it's third, the fifth, and the roots on top. It's still the same three notes, D, F sharp, A. And those of you who've done piano, you, you do those chords on piano, and it's probably more helpful for you to have done those and have that um, visual and, and kinesthetic feel of how they are, how they work. That's so first inversion. This is root. Now, when you take that third of the triad, which is now on the bottom for first inversion, and put it up top, you now have second inversion. You've inverted it again. So all of a sudden, the fifth's on the bottom. See, this A has stayed all the way through there. So the root went up top for first inversion. The root and the third went up top sec for second inversion. And to identify them, it's not hard because you can see there's a little, there's a little um, space there. One up top is first inversion. Two up top is second inversion. Okay, so first a position or root position or root, sorry, root, uh, root position has the root note in the bottom. First inversion has the third of the triad in the bottom, and second inversion has the fifth on the bottom. I'm just going to do a tiny bit more. Identing, identifying triads and inversions without a key signature. Okay? My suggestion to you is, if you're not quick enough at it yet, put it into root position. Make sure it goes line, 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 or space, space, space. So I brought that A down, which is the root. So now I know the root is A. So that's the root. And I can say to myself, is that A to a C a major third or a minor third? Well, I know it's a minor third, so this is a minor triad in first inversion. Inversion, first inversion, because that root's on top. This one, two of them are on top. So we can either throw this one up there, which I think we'll do. So now when you have it in root position, line, 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 you see the root is D. And you ask yourself, is D to an F sharp a major third or minor third? It's a major third, so this one's a major in second. Hope you got that. Two are on top, second inversion. This one, okay, let's bring these guys up. So it's a B, first inversion, so we know that's the root. D, F sharp. Well, is a B to the D a major third or a minor third? It's a minor third. So we have another minor in first inversion. This last one, I'm not going to put it into root position. For those of you who don't need to do that, you can just say to yourself, well, that right there, I know that that is the root because I know it's a second inversion. That's an A flat, A flat to a C. That's a major, major third. So it's a major triad. Okay. And it is in second inversion. Now, when you have a key signature, the only difference is you have to be aware that the key signatures might affect the notes you have here. This has an F sharp in it. A, C, E. It's not affecting it. Let's just look through for a second. D, F, A. Remember, that's an F sharp. So many times we forget that when we're doing our theory, that there's a, sometimes if, if there's a key signature over there, especially if there's a couple of questions and you're over here, you might forget it's over there, so write them in. These ones have their own, but sometimes you have a whole line of them. This one has a B flat, and let's see, this one has an E flat and a B flat. So now I've written them in, so I'm not going to forget them. Okay, root position. Second inversion, second inversion, first inversion. I hope you saw that. Two are up top, one is up top. Is this major or minor? Well, A to a C, this is going to be minor. This one, the root's over here. 
we can put this up on top. D, F sharp A, it's gonna be major. Guess what? That's the same as that one right there. Okay, it's just it has a key signature now. B flat, D, F, well B flat has a D in it, not a D flat, so that's major. And this one over here, the root is here. If we need to put it down here to see it in root position or even write it over here if it's easier, get it away from what's given to you. Don't forget to write any flats or sharps in when you're writing it out for yourself. E flat, G, B, well E flat has a G natural in it, so this is another major. Okay, so these were all majors, <clears throat> excuse me, except the first one. Minor triad, major triad, major triad, major triad. And how did we know? Because of this third right here between the root and the third. The other thing you might be asked to do, and this is going to be a long video here it seems, write out a subdominant triad in D major using a key signature. D major. Two sharps. Subdominant note D major. Subdominant dominant note is the fourth, yes? D, E, F, G. You will be writing out a triad starting on G. This one, writing out a dominant triad in C minor using a key signature. C minor, I'm just going to tell you what it is. B flat, E flat, A flat. Its relative is E flat major. What's the dominant of C? C, D, E, F, G. Use your fingers if you need to. Ah, another G. I chose that, obviously. So you can see they're different tri the same triad, but different triads. Um, because they're the same, because this is a dominant triad, and this B ends up being a natural because it's the leading tone. Anytime you have a minor key with a dominant triad, you're going to raise the third of the triad. Even if, even if it's in position, uh, in um, inversion, you still raise that third, that B, because it's the leading tone of the C minor. Okay, I hope this helped.